get ready to wrap up the fastest hour in radio. We're Rod and Fez. Rosie O'Donnell is thinking about getting back in the magazine business. Good. She was so <laughs> successful. And a lot of times I'll sit around, you know, at night going, I wish I had an old Rosie magazine to read. I wish I didn't throw them all out. I like to see that big picture of her where she wouldn't wear makeup, but then put her face on the front of a magazine. It was the scariest thing ever. This time she wants to launch, launch Our Family magazine for gay and lesbian parents. Oh, that's going to sell big because there's so many gay and lesbian parents out there going, hey, how come there's not a magazine for us? So wouldn't it have a lot of the same things as regular parents? Uh, how to get your kids to sleep and everything? I don't see where it would be much different. I guess there would be some column on how to deal when your kids come home crying because somebody found out that their kid has two, this kid has two moms. This is going to be another failure, Ronnie. Put it down as one of my radio psychics because like anything else anymore, Rosie will go crazy with it. And the cover will have her artwork on it. And there'll be big giant spreads about her kids and giant photographs of them. That was the last magazine that she had that failed. That was literally everything that went wrong with it. It was all literally like <laughs> if a kid in your neighborhood or in your family made up a family newspaper. That was Rosie. And, of course, you know, she'll probably make Boy George with candle wax stripped on his head uh, chief editor or something. She doesn't know how to do this, and she won't let people who do do it do it. Well, very few people can put out a successful magazine. Rosie's not one of them. Pat Boone says he'll never watch CBS again. Finally. I was wondering <laughs> when he would finally decide that. Well, if he's not watching, then I'm not. Wait, I thought you said Daniel Boone. That's the one I listen to, not Pat Boone. No, this goes further back. Pat Boone. He calls them the enemy within for showing photos of the Iraqi prison abuse and making the U.S. a target. He added, next time America is attacked by terrorists, thank CBS. Why not thank the people who abuse the prisoners? Why are you blaming the people who put the news on? <laughs> Why not thank the terrorists that actually attack us? I don't know if that's going to be CBS's uh, new false slogan. Attacked by terrorists, thanks CBS. Why don't you do this? Watch this. Well, you know Pat Boone isn't watching. Do something different from Pat Boone. Watch CBS. I wonder about this. All right, let's say the prison photos didn't get shown, Pat Boone. Uh, would the war be going along any better? Would the war on terror be any safer? It, you know, the prison abuse would still be going on. We just probably wouldn't believe reports out of Iraq that it was happening. The news is supposed to report the news. It's not like if you found out, hey, they made up these prison abuse pictures and then showed them as if it was real news. I joined the gang and saying, hey, I got a problem with CBS. But when they're showing something that actually happened, that's what a journalist does. That's not when you get angry with them. You get angry with them when they tell lies. Madonna's new tour is being called political by some fans. There's a video backdrop showing images of U.S. soldiers at war and injured children during American life. Uh, Fez, this new tour, you mean that's one day on, one day off? She stopped the tour after one show saying that she felt sick. <laughs> one show. It's like uh, this thing must be called the show can't go on. There's tomorrow will be a hangnail. So what are, what are the people's problems with this? There's a video backdrop during the concert, and it's showing uh, U.S. soldiers at war and injured children. I guess injured Iraqi children. Wow, that sounds like something I want to spend two hundred fifty dollars for. <laughs> When's that during holiday? <laughs> She's singing holiday, and all these horrible things are back there. Do people want to hear Madonna's politics? Yeah, I think everybody wants to hear everybody's politics. I always wonder. Why people go, oh, well, she should just shut up and sing. Why? Maybe that's not what she's doing this time. I am always curious about when people go, I like this performer, except for they say who they really are. You know, I mean, you don't have to go to the show, but why are you offended when any American speaks out? Particularly an artist. It's the one person you think, hey, maybe they can give us different perspective. Well, it's like they give the artist too much credit. If you, if someone doesn't take Madonna, you know, seriously, how is her politics going to change your own? It's like you're giving that person way too much credit in your own life. I didn't go there to see to hear her make a speech. Well, if it's not going to change your mind, just start yelling, "Material Girl," through it. Maybe she'll do it.
And I think the problem with canceling the tour, the tour dates, is I think after that first night of doing headstands and leg splits, I think Grammy found out she's a little sore than usual. She probably wasn't as in good a shape going into this as she thought she would be. Why don't you start calling her horse face and make all kinds of little puns about, you know, she's doing the new bridal show. <laughs> Look at those teeth. She should be doing commercials for the Gap. Because she has a Gap in her teeth. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Reports are in that since Queer Eye for the Straight Guy came on the air, more married men are shopping for their own clothes rather than letting their wives shop for them. And also more reports are that uh, they're all watching CBS. I don't know why. So I think we can safely say Queer Eye for the Straight Guy has made the country a better place. Well, you know, I don't know about that. I don't know if it's a better place. But they probably have showed guys how to go out clothes shopping. Well, let's face it, it's nothing that your dad ever taught you. Your dad never said, well, here's the place to go out and get moisturizer. Here's how you want your shirt to fit. Only your mom took you out. And so there's probably a lot of guys out there that aren't really comfortable shopping. Yeah, only my mom took me out, and that was in the, the husky pants nightmare. And that's different how. It's her fault that you were in husky pants. Was she supposed to get your regular size pants and force them on you? She could have told me. She didn't have to announce we were going to huskies. She didn't have to say it. You are who you are, Fez. Why don't you learn to accept yourself? <laughs> I still always try to take this tag off the back of my jeans now so nobody knows that they're so big. You know, that's the first tag I ever saw with three different numbers on it. So you are, you are getting big. <laughs> it's an area code. <laughs> that's it. 205. <laughs> That's it for the fastest hour in radio. Before we go, a couple of happy birthdays. Todd Bridges of Different Strokes is 39 years old, and he'll celebrate with just a quiet arrest with a few friends later on tonight. And Andre 3000 is 30, and he can expect 30 birthday stankings. Thank you very much. We're Ron and Fez, back later right here on WJFK-FM.